Hello my crafting family, Michelle here. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad that you decided to join me today. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm so happy you found me. I have a Dollar Tree DIY for you today. In today's crafting adventure, I'm going to show you how I made this adorable small lemon wreath. I had a lot of fun pulling this small wreath together. I hope you enjoy the tutorial. Let me show you how to make it. For today's project, you're going to need one of the eight inch uh, wreath forms that you can pick up from Dollar Tree. And then today I'm going to be using the Poly Pro Mesh Ribbon. This is waterproof. I picked this up from Hobby Lobby and this roll is five and a half inches at 10 yards. One roll should be sufficient to do the wreath. Now the Poly Pro Mesh regularly retails for $7.99. I was able to pick it up when it was 50% off, which makes it very reasonably priced. That's only $4 for the mesh to cover your wreath base. That's pretty good. I have my mesh unwrapped and laid out. You're also gonna need some pipe cleaners cut in half. Now you can either cut your mesh with scissors or with a rotary cutter. I really prefer using a rotary cutter. Now this one you can pick up from the Dollar Tree. It's only $1.25. And I really do like these. They last at least six months or longer. And um, I've been using them since they came out. I really do like them. They give you a nice clean cut. So whatever you have, uh, whether it's a good pair of scissors or a rotary you can use, you wanna cut your mesh at about six inches. nice clean cuts. I really do like this mesh um, whenever I want to use a neutral tone based mesh this is what I go for and I can pick this up either from Hobby Lobby or Joann's uh, I have not really been able to find it at Michael's but I just get online whenever I need it and I look and see who has it on sale and that's where I go and buy it. And this time it was Hobby Lobby and I was able to get quite a few. Now we're going to be doing the curl method. So you want to take your six inch piece and you want to go where the cut end is. You want to fold that down and give it a good roll. You should do about two to three rolls. You don't want to roll too tight, otherwise you have issues of it sticking out at the bottom. Now we're going to do two rolls per bundle. So you can either hold it in your fingers or you can clip it. Um, sometimes I have to clip it because my arthritis is bothering me. So whichever works for you. Okay, then put your two rolls together and we're going to tie that off. Just like to get a good grip in the back you want to pinch that nice and tight and give it a good twist and then you have your nice little curls okay, I'll show you one more time take your mesh and just go ahead and curl it don't try to roll it up too tightly otherwise you'll run into issues so I usually go for about the size of a fat cigar So yeah, about three rolls. This mesh is nice and thick and fluffy, so you won't need to use quite as much. Okay. And then when you're attaching these to your wreath, you're going to be attaching it to the center bar and the outer bar. If you want your wreath a little bit smaller, then you would attach it to the center bar and the inner bar. But I want it just a little bit larger. And I prefer to attach to two bars if I can, rather than just one. 
it makes your bundles a little bit more stable. So the first one here, I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the crossbar. Pull those to the back, give it a twist. Pull your pipe cleaner together and then push forward. That will keep your back nice and clean. And from the front, when you're done, you won't be able to see those pipe cleaners. Wrap it around the two bars on the outside and give it a good twist in the back. And then push those pipe cleaners forward. And slide your bundle over. I'm going to work on the base a little bit. Once I get a section done, I'll come back and show you what it's looking like. I have one section done. I'm really happy with the look. The curl method gives that very textured look. I think it looks fabulous. Now I did place 10 bundles in this section, but you could probably get away with eight. It all depends on how full you like your wreath. So to do this full wreath, because there are three sections, you will need a total of 30 bundles. I'm going to finish the base and then we'll come back and we'll start the fun part of decorating. I have my base all done and it did take one full roll of the deco mesh. I have that much left from the roll so that was perfect. I'm really happy with the results and you can see in the back here by pushing your pipe cleaners forward into the wreath that it makes the back look nice and clean and you cannot see them from the front. Now to decorate our wreath here, I'm going to be using these lemons. Now they, I found them at Dollar Tree. They do come in a package of three. So I'll be using one package. And I did pull out one stem of this artificial fern. I think this looks pretty close to lemon leaves. So I'm gonna be using some of these. So just go ahead and trim off some of the leaves. I think I'm only going to use maybe three or four. Now for my sign, I'm going to be using this piece. Now this is actually a framed decor piece that you can find over where they have the frames and home decor. This does have a piece of glass in it so you can see it does reflect. If you don't want that, just take it apart and remove the glass. But I thought this was really cute. It says, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. And it has a bunch of lemons in the back. I really did like the kind of blue or teal tint that you can see in that with the yellow. Now to attach this, here where the hanger is, I went ahead and attached some floral wire. And this is just the floral wire that you can pick up from Dollar Tree. I really do like their floral wire for attaching signs. And I usually always use the silver because it disappears on pretty much most colors. And then here on the bottom, I just attached with hot glue a pipe cleaner. Now I do like to use a combination of floral wire and pipe cleaners to attach my signs. Uh, if this sign does tend to go outside and the temperature gets real hot or cold, your hot glue can fail. So it's always good to have a backup. If it has floral wire, your sign's not going to fall off your wreath. And then to attach this to your wreath, you're just going to feed the floral wire and the pipe cleaner down in through the mesh and you attach it to the wire frame in the back. Just decide where you would like to place your sign. I was originally thinking maybe in the center, but I think I'm going to place it here on the side and I want it to come down just a little bit. I want to place my lemons and leaves on this side and then I want to leave the top open for a nice big bow. Okay, I'm going to go get my sign attached here and then we'll add our lemons and leaves. 
I have my sign on. I'm really happy with its placement. Now we're going to work on putting the lemons in. And I'm going to cluster all my lemons kind of in the same area. Kind of like that. And then I'm going to feed in some of the leaves. So you just want to make sure you get a good amount of hot glue on there so you get some good adhesion. Now time to sneak in some leaves around there. And just go ahead and add in your leaves, tuck them in wherever it looks right for you. And this stem, the leaves on the bottom are larger than the leaves at the top. So if you want smaller leaves, just take them from the top. You can do a mixture, whatever looks right to you. Don't be afraid to go in and kind of bend your leaves to make sure that they lay the way that you want them to. So just play around with your leaves until you're happy with where they're placed and then go ahead and glue them in. So I picked out several ribbons for my bow. Now these two I picked up at Dollar Tree. Uh, I really like this one. It has lemons and a little bit of greenery on it. And then this ribbon, it says sweeten with gratitude. Sweeten it with gratitude, zest for life. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade, which is exactly what the sign says. So I thought these two were perfect to complement the sign. Now the sign also has a really pretty kind of teal blue in it, and this ribbon will help pull that out. So that's why I pulled this one. And then these two are just fun. Uh, I like the yellow and white together. One's a little bit brighter and one's a little bit lighter. I want this bow to have lots of different dimensions in it, so I'm going to use a little bit of everything. And I'm going to start with this yellow ribbon. And this yellow ribbon is two and a half inches. The blue ribbon here is two and a half inches. This one I also got at Dollar Tree. This one I believe I got at like Hobby Lobby or Michaels. And this one I got at Walmart. And this one is one and a half inches. So these three are one and a half inches in width, and these two are two and a half inches in width. Okay, now I don't want really long tails, so I'm only going to measure at about six inches for my tail. I'm going to pinch and place that in my Easy Bow Maker. Now I tend to suffer from arthritis in my hands because I worked as a hairdresser for over 30 years. So this bow maker I really like. It helps hold the bows. It also gives me measurements to make it easy for me to measure. Okay, so once you come through the two large dowel rods, you're going to want to twist this ribbon because it's only nice on one side and you want your nice side to be facing down. Now this first loop I'm going to measure at four inches. This is going to be my largest loop that I'm going to make for this bow. And I am going to try to get three loops on each side at four inches. I don't know if I have enough of the ribbon in here to do that, 
If I don't, then I'm only going to do two weeks. But hopefully I can get the three. And look at that. I couldn't have planned that any better. Uh, had just enough ribbon left of that one. Just need to trim a little bit. Next, I'm going to go here to this beautiful teal ribbon. Now this is like a faux burlap and I really like this ribbon. Whenever Dollar Tree comes out with a two and a half inch colored faux burlap ribbon, it's usually very good ribbon. Okay, with this one as well, I'm going to measure at six inches and pinch. Now this ribbon is the same on both sides. So it's up to you if you would like to twist once you come through or not. Uh, I do tend to find that if you do twist, it happens to make it a little easier for you when you're doing your bow, when you're trying to pull all your loops apart. So I'm going to go ahead and twist. And then with this ribbon, I'm going to make, let's see, I'm going to stick with four inches. And with this one, I'm going to do two loops on either side at four inches. For your convenience, in the description box below is a detailed list of all the tools and materials I used to make this small lemon wreath. Okay, now that I have my uh, two loops on either side at four inches, I'm going to go ahead and trim my tails here at six inches. Next, I'm going to go here to this uh, lemon ribbon. I think this is really pretty. Again, I'm going to measure my tails at six inches. Pinch, and this ribbon is only nice on one side, so I need to twist as I come through. And these loops, I am going to measure at three inches. And I will be making three loops on either side at three inches. If you enjoy hauls, crafts, and learning new craft techniques, please consider subscribing to my channel. I do upload new content every week. And if you hit the notification bell when it pops up, YouTube should let you know every time I upload new content. Okay, I have my three loops on either side, so I'm going to measure my tail here at six inches. Next, I'm going to move to this one. I think that is so pretty. Clean up my end here. Again, measure at six inches and pinch. Now with this ribbon, I'm going to do two loops on either side at three inches. And this ribbon is only nice on one side, as I'm seeing, so you need to twist it. The 
this ribbon is nice. It's nice and thick, a little stiff, which is good. And this one I got from Walmart. Let's see. 12 feet for $3.98. That's a good price. Now feel free to adjust your loops. You want to make sure everything is sitting properly. While it's in the bow maker, it's much easier to do it now than when you take it out. And for our final ribbon, I'm going to be using this. I love all the, lo the lovely sayings on it. You want two loops on either side at three inches. Now I have my two loops on either side. I'm going to add one more loop to this side. That is going to be my center loop and I'm going to make it the same length, the two inches. So twist so that the nice side's facing down. Make one more loop at three inches. Okay. Now we need our other tail on this side, so you're going to bring that back through the two in the very front, the small dowel rod and the large dowel rod. Because we need our tail on the other side. Okay, and then measure out that tail at six inches and trim. So just double check. You can open up your bow if you want inside the bow maker. Make sure that all your loops are stacked nicely. Now is the time to do your adjusting. It'll be much easier now than after you get it tied together. I just like to hold it down so that it doesn't come undone or loosen as I check. With this many different ribbons, you just you really need to check because <laughs> things can move as you're working on it. Okay, looks good. Now you need one full length pipe cleaner. And I like to lift it up and slide it in on the side here, pull it right next to the wooden dowel rods. And I like to pull them together, get them kind of snug, and then lift out the bow. This will help keep everything stacked properly until you can get that tied down. Because if you lose your stack, the bow will be more difficult to open up. So pull it to the back. I wrap it around a couple times just because it makes it easier to pull it nice and tight. Give it a good twist or two. On this last ribbon that we used, you want to make sure that you keep a little piece on this side after that last loop so that uh, your bow doesn't fall apart. That holds that whole ribbon back in place. Okay. You won't be able to see it once you open everything up because that one loop is going to go in the center there. So then just go ahead and grab. I like to hold right in the center. You can start to pull down your tails. So 
just slowly work your way down and pull them forward. And that's why I like to hold on to the center. That way I don't pull too much. I won't pull anything out. If they're not laying right, go right up to where it comes out and twist it in the direction so that it'll lay the way you want it to. Sometimes you kind of have to beat it into submission. Now, bow fluffing can take a long time. I don't usually do all of my fluffing on camera because sometimes it can take me a half an hour to fluff out my bow. So if it takes you a long time, don't feel bad. A lot of us spend a lot of time fluffing out our bows to get it to look the way you want. Just got to be patient and take your time. Okay, I got my tails pulled down. Now my pipe cleaner is really short in the back here, so I need to add another one to be able to attach it to my wreath. So I just lay that in between the other two, pull them and give a twist. Okay, and then I take one long one and one short one and I wrap them together. And then I do the same thing on the other side. Another trick that I like to do to help keep my bow sitting up on top of my wreath and not getting pulled down into my deco mesh is I take both of those pipe cleaners and I twist them together for about two to three inches. Now that is the depth inside my deco mesh. So that way, even though it's nice and tight onto my wire frame, it's not going to pull it down inside the mesh. It'll help you keep it up on top where you want it so you can see it. Just like that. So see, that's all twisted together, but this is what I can use to attach it to the frame. Okay, so I want to put my bow on. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to put my bow right here, just slightly off center. I want to be able to kind of fan out my tails. And I will trim them once I get my bow on and I fluffed it out and I see how all of my tails are going to lay because I don't want it to cover my sign and I don't want them to cover the lemons. And to attach this, you just uh, use the pipe cleaners there and feed it through the deco mesh and attach it to your frame in the back. Okay. And there you go, I got my bow on and fluffed out. I got my tails trimmed. I am really happy with that. I think it really pulls out the colors in the sign, especially that beautiful teal ribbon. Now there's one final item I want to add to this wreath that I think will completely finish it off. And I pulled out this stem of these white blooms. This is a delphinium. And I just cut the tip off so I have this nice little bunch of white flowers. And I want to glue that right here in the center of my lemons. I think that it needs something right there, something a little soft, and I think those will be perfect. So this is going to be my final addition to this three. Just add some hot glue and place it. And there you go, we are all done. Well, I'm very pleased with the end result. It's very bright and cheery. And I like the size. The finished wreath is about 12 to 13 inches in diameter, which is perfect. A lot of people don't have a lot of space for a large wreath. So something small like this is wonderful. 
And of course, lemon can be put up all year long or even just through spring and summer. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up and leave me some love in the comments. This really does help support my channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. It's always a pleasure to see you. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.